When looking at any electronic circuits, there'll be many waveforms that'll be seen. Sine waves, square waves, rectangular waves, triangular waves, sawtooth waves, and ramp waveforms. They're all there, but what exactly are they? In this video, we'll answer your questions and look at the basic waveforms. We'll explain what they are and what you need to know about their characteristics and their makeup so that you can better understand how electronic circuits respond to them. But before we look at the common waveforms, we'll take a look at how they can be viewed or plotted. The most common way to view a waveform is to look at a plot of its amplitude, typically its voltage or sometimes its current, over a period of time. Time is on the horizontal axis and amplitude on the vertical axis. The test instrument we use for displaying signals in this way is called an oscilloscope. These oscilloscopes, or scopes, can take a variety of forms, and they're commonly used as bench test instruments like this one. Some scopes, though, are just a box that's connected to a computer, which displays the waveform image, or trace, as it's called, and the computer also provides the controls for the measurements to be made. But before we look at the waveforms, we need to mention another way of looking at them. We've mentioned that waveforms can be viewed as a plot of amplitude and time, but we can also look at the frequency spectrum or the signal frequencies that a waveform contains. This can show some really interesting aspects of the signal that might not have been realised before. Test instruments that can display the spectrum of a signal are called spectrum analyzers, as you might expect, although some modern oscilloscopes can show the basics of the spectrum of the signal as well. So let's look at the waveforms. We'll be looking at the sine wave, the square wave, triangular wave and sawtooth or ramp waveform. For each one we'll explain what they are and we'll be revealing some fascinating features about each one as well. First let's look at the sine wave. On a scope this looks like a simple waveform going up and down. It also sounds quite plain as we see here. A little later, we'll compare all the waveforms together so that you can hear the differences between them. The sine wave can be expressed as a mathematical formula. The amplitude is the sine of what is called the angular frequency times the time. The value increases and decreases according to the time and the rate at which the waveform is advancing. The equation comprises of several parts. The variable a scales the overall value so that when sine is equal to 1, the maximum value sign can take on, the whole equation gives the required peak value. Omega is the angular frequency, and this can also be expressed as 2 pi times the frequency. This gives the instantaneous value at any position on the plot. As the time advances over the cycle, the value of sine will vary. The additional variable here enables a phase difference to be accommodated. If the waveform starts at its peak, as it does in the case of a cosine waveform, then this variable can be set to 90 degrees, or pi divided by 2. It also allows other phase differences to be accommodated as well. If we look at the spectrum of a sine wave, then we'll see that it consists of a single frequency. There are no harmonics or other signals apart from the background noise. A sine wave is just a single frequency, and as we'll see a little later, it is a building block for other waveforms. There are several key aspects to the sine wave. The first is the period of the waveform. This is the time for one cycle. It's the time from a point on one cycle to the same point on the next one. It doesn't really matter which point is taken, but the exact point must be taken on two successive waveforms. Sometimes the point where it crosses the zero volt line may be used, or at other times it may be a specific trigger voltage. The next aspect is the frequency. This is the number of vibrations per second. So it's possible, for example, to measure how many times the waveform passes up or down through the zero volts line in a second. The frequency can be measured as the number of cycles per second. But these days, the unit that's used for frequency is the hertz. One hertz is equal to one cycle per second. As frequencies can rise very high, we use the standard metric multiples of kilo for a thousand hertz, mega for a million, and giga for a thousand million. 
The amplitude is another important measurement. There are several ways the amplitude can be measured, but two are the peak amplitude of the waveform and the peak to peak. There are other measurements of this, but these are a topic for another video. Let's now move on to look at a square wave. As the name indicates, this type of waveform has square edges, with the amplitude switching between two values. Strictly speaking, a square wave should have the same period in the two states. If they're different, then it's a rectangular wave. But usually the term square wave is used for this general type of waveform. There can also be pulsed or digital waveforms that carry data, and these tend not to be periodic, repeating every cycle. So let's look at the square wave. If we listen to its sound, we hear that it's very different to that of the sine wave. This is because it consists of a large number of sine waves at multiples or harmonics of the fundamental frequency. If we look at the spectrum of the square wave, we see that it comprises of a fundamental sine wave having the same frequency or repetition rate as the overall waveform, and then there's a series of odd integer harmonics reducing in amplitude as the frequency increases. Remember that the amplitude scale we're looking at here is logarithmic, so that they are actually reducing fairly considerably in strength as the frequency increases. Another form of common waveform is the triangular wave. Again, this has its own distinctive sound. If we look at the spectrum, we see that this waveform consists of a fundamental sine wave, which has the same frequency as the basic repetition rate, and then there are various harmonics. The proportion of each harmonic actually determines the shape of the waveform. So let's look at the next waveform. This is a sawtooth or ramp waveform. This can have a positive going ramp like this, or a negative going ramp as we see here. These waveforms are used for different purposes in electronic circuits, so we may encounter both types at one time or another. The waveforms sound different to triangular, square and sine waves, but interestingly there is very little difference between the positive and negative going ramps. Again, if we look at the spectrum, we see it has the fundamental and a variety of harmonics, and interestingly, this time, we see it has both even and odd integer harmonics. So let's now compare the sounds of all the waveforms so that we can hear the differences between each one of them. So that's our introduction to common waveforms. If you want more information, please head over to the description section for more information and useful links. Also, please don't forget to subscribe to our channel, and it will be really good if you can like the video. Thank you.